This is country singer Jelly Roll, and here are a few of the more memorable quotes from Jelly Roll Save Me, his new documentary on Hulu. In the opening minutes, he says, quote, I've been in jail 40 times in my life before admitting he never made it out of ninth grade. Several minutes later, it's, quote, if I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead for sure. At about the 23 minute mark, Jelly Roll admits, I smoked meth out of a light bulb at 15 years old. That one will make you flinch. Y'all, this is a 90 minute long film and I just covered the first third of it. I haven't even gotten to the best part. It's Billy Dukes, and the best part is how inspiring Jelly Roll's story truly is. That feels almost cliche, because a sketch of his story, local kid goes from the streets to the biggest stages in Nashville, that's inspiring. This is a bone-deep kind of inspiration that manifests over and over and over again. One scene in particular tears me up. There's an old phrase that says that we overcome by the power of our testimony. You have a real strong testimony. And you're going to do a lot of good for the world with it one day. I dropped a link in the description section for more on why that's important, but I really encourage you to just watch, give Jelly Roll a thumbs up to show your support, and consider tapping subscribe, because his fans are learning this is the Country Music News YouTube channel that treats him right. I'm going to bring in TOC's Addison Hager now to help me work through 10 questions about Jelly Roll that this film answers. Hey, Billy. Those questions are all found in the description section of this video, so you can totally jump around if you'd like. But they focus on his childhood, what got him sent to jail, his wife and daughter, and what everyone got wrong about that story, and who Jelly Roll is today. To me, that's the big takeaway. I said you'll walk away from this doc feeling inspired, but you might also fear for Jelly Roll. Totally. But let's get started with the softball. How did Jelly Roll get that nickname? This is an easy one, but it's also a little sad. Jelly Roll's real name is Jason DeFord, but his mama gave him that nickname because he was a pudgy kid, and those are his words, not mine. Throughout the film, he'll talk candidly about battling a depression so severe that there are days he can't get out of bed. It all stems from his obesity, which makes that nickname a sword with no handles. Gosh, wow, that's sad. And I'm not judging whatsoever when I say this, but it's clear that as he's become more successful, he's put on more weight and it's really affecting his health in 2023. That's a big theme for this film. Does Jelly Roll have any other family? He does. We meet two older brothers, Roger and Scott, and they play a pretty significant role in the movie and both seem to have escaped the hard life that Jelly Roll lived. Both of them seem like the kind of dudes you'd want to grab beers with. Jelly Roll's father died over 10 years ago, and we never see his mother in the movie outside of old family footage and photos. The reason for this is she continues to struggle with her mental health. This is all part of how Jelly Roll's life started to turn upside down. Actually, Billy, one second. I'm going to stop you right there because my next question is, what went wrong for him as a child? Jelly Roll's early years are described as fairly normal, but as he tells his mother's story, it becomes clear how it bleeds into his own story. Jelly Roll's mom began to slip away before Jason was a teenager, and she'd remain in one particular room of the house for days at a time. Doctors prescribed drugs for pain and anxiety, and this led to addiction. Eventually, his parents divorced, and they lost the house. This, Jelly Roll says, is what started the spiral. Here's what his brothers had to say about it. And she robbed herself of a lot of life. Yeah. And she she robbed us of a lot of life. To his credit, it's really clear Jelly still loves his mother, In fact, he reveals she's the person he writes all of his songs for, and she had a great influence on his musical upbringing. How bad did it get for Jelly Roll? This was a real revelation. He spoke of addiction as something he encountered through others, but it's now clear that he had a drug problem by the time he could drive a car. I'd smoked meth out of a light bulb at 15 years old. By 16, he was using cocaine, acid, mushrooms, and more. There's a real tragic moment when we see these baby-faced pictures of Jelly Roll, I mean, he looks like anyone you or your kids could go to school with, and he's talking about how, quote, everybody smoked crack. Ugh, I cannot even imagine. So I'm assuming that is why he went to jail? More or less. It was all drug-related crimes. He would justify it by believing he could save enough money to get out of town, but at 16 he was charged with a strong-arm robbery, and when a judge refused to try him as a juvenile, he got some serious jail time. As he tells this story, one understands why he feels his life could have turned out differently if the judge would have shown leniency. 
In 2022 and 2023, he's turned that regret into action by helping young men and women in his position. So that's the hard part of the story. Now that he's free of that life, what did it? Uh, not so fast. That's the big takeaway here. What do you mean? In a sense, Jelly Roll has done the work to succeed, but he's still very close to the people tied to that street life. One man, a guy named Nate, was shot and killed the very day that Jelly Roll was set to play Red Rock's Amphitheater in 2022. He considered this guy a nephew. Beyond that, he admits to a concerning level of drug and alcohol use today. I still smoke a little weed to keep my head straight. I will still get blackout drunk, and every now and then we'll do something wild. It's kind of easy to imagine a worst case scenario here, and I think as fans and media, it's important not to tell his story as if all of his troubles are behind him. To me, this is part of the reason why his story connects. Let me know if I'm right or wrong in the comment section below, and please consider tapping subscribe to show you appreciate this kind of in-depth coverage. Billy, do we learn more about his relationship with Bunny? Definitely. Jelly Roll's wife, Bunny, becomes a main character during the second half of the documentary, with the last third really zooming in on their love story. We learn that they lived a pretty wild life together early in their marriage, with her supplying him with drugs as he needed. Jelly Roll was blackout drunk the night they got married, but they beat the odds to remain married and recognize they needed to slow down. It's not a party if it happens every night, it's an addiction. I think we knew they partied a little bit, but that's all new to me. Why did they slow down? This is where Jelly Roll's daughter becomes an important character. Bailey Ann DeFord is central to Jelly Roll's turnaround, but not in the way you might have believed. He repeats a story he's told before about learning he'd become a father in jail and pledging to live right. During this documentary, one learns that he wasn't a great father at first, and he would go weeks without seeing her while he was touring or just partying like a bachelor. Bailey's mother's heroin addiction forced Jelly Roll and Bunny to step up to save her. The mom was out of her daughter's life for four years as she fought addiction that started when she was trying to treat fibromyalgia. This turnaround, it all came back in about 2016. I'll mention here that Jelly Roll has a son he's not mentioned at all in this film. We can only assume he's made some agreement with the boy's mother to keep those details private. Two more questions here. When did things turn professionally for Jelly Roll? I mean, that's a really great question. We're here because of the song, Save Me. They say my lifestyle is bad for my health. He dropped it during the pandemic and it went viral to the point that by 2021, every record label in America wanted to work with him. To show just how fast he climbed from obscurity, he recalled being really happy to sell 1,000 tickets in Connecticut in January 2022. By December, he'd sold close to 20,000 at Nashville's Bridgestone Arena. That is amazing. I mean, everyone praises this guy today. I imagine all those insecurities have melted away. Not a chance. Bunny and Jelly Roll both still feel like outsiders and watching them prepare for the 2022 CMA Awards proves it. They're really nervous. And at one point, Bunny turns to the camera and admits they both feel like they're on the fringe, looked at skeptically. I think this goes back to his struggles with depression, something else that he speaks of candidly. I really can't recommend this movie enough. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button on the way out if you're a big fan of Jelly Roll, because here at Taste of Country, we sure are. I'm Addison Hager for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching. And as always, thanks for subscribing.